All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about concavity and how it relates to the second derivative of a function. So like we've been talking about increasing and decreasing with functions, concavity or where a function is concave up or concave down, is just another thing that we can talk about with the graph or behavior of a function. So to get us going on this, I'm gonna draw three different shapes of a little portion of a graph here. All of these will have a positive first derivative because they're increasing, the slopes are always positive. So I'm gonna go through one at a time and just draw some tangent lines and see how the slopes are changing over time. So on this first graph, I'm seeing that the slopes get more positive over time. So we start off as a positive slope that's sort of flat and then it becomes a steeper but still positive slope. So if we think about the slopes of these lines, maybe the first slope is a small positive number like one half or one. Then as we move to the right, the slopes become steeper so they get bigger. So maybe our slope is five, then 10, then 100. The slopes get more positive, meaning the slopes are increasing over time. And remember, the slope is really the derivative. The slope at any point is the derivative. So we can say the derivative is increasing over time. Then since the second derivative is the rate of change of the derivative, the first derivative, we are gonna say that the second derivative is positive. It's greater than zero. So on this first graph, the first derivative is positive since the function is increasing. Then we're also going to say the second derivative is positive because the derivative is increasing over time. Just a comment, in this video, I'm going through all these examples, just showing you the sort of behind the scenes of how we remember what's going on. But later in the video, I'll give you a shorter, more specific way to remember all of this. So you don't have to go through the thought process every time. So on the second graph, we are also increasing. And so the derivative, the first derivative is greater than zero, it's positive. But here, if I draw two tangent lines, I'm noticing that the slopes stay the same over time. So the slopes are constant over time, or the derivative is constant over time. So here, the second derivative, which tells us how the first derivative is changing, will be equal to zero, since the first derivative isn't changing at all. The slopes aren't changing. So their rate of change is zero. The second derivative is zero. Then in the last case, we have an increasing function. So the first derivative is positive, but here the slopes are getting less positive. The first tangent line has a steep slope. It's a positive slope and it's pretty steep, but as we move to the right, that slope is going to flatten out. So the slopes are going to stay positive. It's always increasing, so it still has a positive slope, but they're becoming flatter. They're becoming a smaller positive number. They're becoming less positive. So this means that the slopes are decreasing over time or the derivative is decreasing over time. And since the second derivative is the rate of change of the first derivative or the rate of change of the slopes, the second derivative is negative since it corresponds with a decreasing derivative. So just like first derivative tells you increasing or decreasing, we're gonna do the same thing here with second derivative, except it tells you increasing or decreasing with the derivative. So if you notice, as we go through these three examples, the derivative is increasing was a positive second derivative. Derivative is constant was a zero second derivative. And the derivative is decreasing was a negative second derivative. So increasing still goes with positive and decreasing still goes with negative. It's just now applied to the second derivative. So instead of writing out all those words all the time, mathematicians often like to summarize these in a little shorter phrase. So for the first graph, we say that the function is increasing at an increasing rate. The slopes are getting more positive. The middle graph is increasing at a constant rate. The slopes are staying the same. And the final graph is increasing at a decreasing rate. The positive slopes are getting less positive over time. If this is a little confusing to you, that's totally all right. This is complicated. Just stay along with me. We're going to wrap this all up in a much simpler summary at the end of this. Okay, let's try this with some decreasing graphs. So I'm gonna draw three pictures here. They should look sort of similar to the previous graphs we drew, except this time they all have negative slopes. They're all decreasing. Remember, this is just a little portion of a function. We could have lots of different shapes in a function. We're just looking at little segments of them. So for all of these graphs, we're going to have a negative first derivative since the function is decreasing. The slopes are negative. But let's go through each of these one at a time and see how the slopes are changing. So on our first graph, I'm drawing my two tangent lines again, and I'm noticing that the slopes are negative, but they're becoming flatter, and so they're becoming less negative. So whereas on the tangent line I drew first, maybe the slope is negative 10, the second tangent line has a slope of maybe just negative one. So the slopes are getting less negative, meaning they're becoming more positive. So the slopes are getting less negative or more positive, 
which means that the slope is increasing over time. So that change from a slope of negative 10 to a, the slope of negative one, that number got bigger. So the slope is increasing over time. And remember, we can use the word derivative instead of slope. So the derivative here is increasing over time. This means that the second derivative is positive here. So the derivative is increasing means the second derivative is positive. Then on my middle graph, the slopes are staying the same. The slope is constant over time. The derivative is constant over time. So the derivatives aren't changing, meaning the second derivative is equal to zero. Then on my rightmost function, my slopes are getting more negative. So again, with my two tangent lines, my first tangent line is sort of flat, but it has a negative slope, maybe a slope of negative one. Then as I move to the right, my slope gets steeper, more negative, and so maybe the slope is negative 10. And so my slopes are getting more negative, which is less positive. They're getting further away from positive numbers. And so the derivative is decreasing over time. As we move from left to right, the derivative, the slope, is becoming more negative. It's decreasing. So here we would say the second derivative is negative. It's less than zero. And similar to the increasing graphs, we like to summarize these in little shorter phrases. For the first example, we say that the function is decreasing at an increasing rate. The second function, we say that it is decreasing at a constant rate. And then the last example, we say the function is decreasing at a decreasing rate. So the way that we talk about these ideas of decreasing at a decreasing rate, increasing at a decreasing rate, all of this jazz about the second derivative, we call this concavity, and it describes how the rates of change are changing over time. And really, I like to think of concavity as explaining the graph. So like increasing and decreasing tell you information about the graph, concavity, or concave up and concave down, tell us other information about the graph. So on the left-hand side, I have the concave up portions of the graph. So I like to think of these as a little piece of a cup that's facing upward, and that's how I know it's concave up. And on the right-hand side, I have the concave down graphs. So again, I like to think of this as a cup that's facing down. I've heard people also talk about a cave facing down. You think of a cave as a thing that kind of comes in like a cup. I don't know why I always have thought of cups instead, but you could think of a cave facing up and a cave facing down if you like that. So on the concave up graphs, my first derivative is positive on the top and negative on the bottom. So the first graph has increasing and the second graph is decreasing. But what they have in common is that the second derivative is positive. So both of these graphs have slopes that are becoming more positive. They are increasing over time. So they have a positive second derivative. But what you can really start to remember is that concave up is a positive second derivative. That's really what you need to remember with all of this. I've just been trying to explain the process of why that's true. Then for the concave down graphs, the top one has a positive first derivative since it's increasing, and the bottom graph has a negative first derivative since it's decreasing. But what they have in common is that the second derivative is negative on both of these graphs. Again, we're looking at the ones on the right-hand side here. So when you have a concave down portion of a function, the second derivative is negative. So the slopes are decreasing. They're becoming less positive over time. Again, what I would start to remember is that concave down means a negative second derivative. Concave up is a positive second derivative. And knowing this is the main tool we need in order to answer questions about concavity. All right, I know I've already talked for a long time, but I really think it's gonna be helpful for you to just see one example of what this looks like on a graph. I think that's just gonna really solidify things and make you feel more confident. So let's talk about how to identify concavity graphically. So I'm just gonna draw a graph here and label it with some points, and then we're gonna talk about what we know about the graph. And here, this is just the graph of the original function. I just wanna show you what the concavity looks like when you see it actually in a function rather than in a little portion of a graph like we've been doing. Remember, the concave up corresponds to a positive second derivative, and concave down corresponds to a negative second derivative. And concave up is like a cup or a cave facing up, and concave down is like a cup or a cave facing down. So something we're going to notice is that it's kind of hard to tell where we change from concave down to concave up here. So the first portion of the graph we have a cave or a cup that's facing down, and then it connects to something that's facing up. And I don't know exactly where that change is happening. We're going to learn how to tell with some calculus. That's part of why we're learning this. But for now, I'm just going to try to choose a point that I think looks like where it's happening 
we'll find more specific ways to do this exactly rather than having to guess. And that point where the concavity changes that I'm just sort of arbitrarily selecting here, we'll learn how to find it exactly, and it's called the inflection point. So I'm just going to call it a for right now, just to say it happens at some x value a. And so we know that the function is concave up from a to infinity on the right hand side of the graph, and it's concave down from negative infinity to a on the left hand side of the graph. This inflection point is where the second derivative is zero. So we have a negative second derivative first on the left hand side, a positive second derivative on the right hand side, that's the concave down and the concave up. Then at that point where we connect, we have an inflection point, and that has a second derivative that's zero. So similar to how the critical points had a first derivative that was zero, inflection points have a second derivative that is zero. And just to summarize, an inflection point is where the function changes concavity and is where the second derivative is zero. So in another video, we're going to talk more about how to find these locations. And I'm also going to go more into detail because here I've only said that the second derivative is zero, but inflection points can also happen where the second derivative is undefined. So if you're taking notes, you probably want to add that in. The inflection point happens where the second derivative is zero and where it's undefined. This is just like how the critical numbers occur where the first derivative is zero or undefined. Inflection point is the second derivative version of that. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.